That's a big one. Look at that. Three different wild edibles within arm's reach of each other. Hey there, welcome back, I'm John. Uh, it's early spring right now. It's a beautiful time of year and a great time to collect wild edibles. So let's eat what we can eat. This is onion grass or wild garlic. There we go. The whole plant's edible. Um, the bulb is the best part though. Uh, you really gotta like garlic to uh, enjoy these. They have a very strong garlic flavor. But they're not bad. Wild garlic, allium vineal. An invasive species in many regions, especially North America. While considered a nuisance by some gardeners, the bulbs and leaves are edible and may be used in cooking in much the same way cultivated garlic is used. A perennial plant, wild garlic can live for several years and regrow from bulbs season after season. This hardy plant is tough to eradicate, especially once it establishes itself. Like other allium species, allium vineal provides nectar for pollinators and serves as forage, particularly in areas where it forms dense stands. Allium vineal serves as a reminder of the resilience and adaptability of plants, especially invasive species. Right here are the remains of uh, last year's Japanese knotweed plants. But, if you look at the base of them, clear the leaves out a little bit. You see these guys. These are the new shoots. And, they are edible. Mm. Uh, they're a little sour. Uh, a lot of people like to cook them, and uh, they are a lot better cooked. But uh, they're not bad raw. Kind of like uh, rhubarb. Um, the good thing about them is uh, <laughs> Japanese knotweed is a very invasive plant. So uh, the more you eat, the less they grow. Here's another knotweed shoot. Pretty good. Japanese knotweed, Renutria japonica. Widely considered one of the world's most invasive plant species, it grows rapidly and can quickly overrun native vegetation. It is extremely resilient and can grow in a wide range of habitats. Its deep root system and ability to regenerate from fragments make it difficult to eradicate. The plant's strong bamboo-like stems can reach heights of 10 feet or more in a single growing season. Japanese knotweed can alter ecosystems by outcompeting native plants for resources, reducing biodiversity. Here's one of those spring beauty plants. Mmm. They are delicious. One of the best uh, 
wild edibles you'll find in springtime. You can eat the uh, the whole uh, spring beauty plant, the flowers, the leaves, and everything. Um, but the best part, in my opinion, is something called the corm. Uh, it takes a little bit of getting to get to it. All right. This is what we're after. Now it takes a little bit of a uh, clean in. To get it. To get the dirt off, now you have to peel the skin off. Look at that, like magic. Mm. It's like a mild radish uh, flavor. They're delicious. Definitely worth the work. Spring Beauty, Claytonia virginica. A member of the Montiaceae family, the Spring Beauty is native to Eastern North America. As its name suggests, it is one of the earliest wildflowers to bloom in New England. Each delicate flower blooms for only a few days before wilting, but new flowers continue to emerge throughout the season. Spring beauty plants are commonly found in woodlands, meadows, and along stream banks. They are vitally important to early spring ecosystems, providing nectar and pollen for early emerging spring pollinators such as bees and butterflies. Spring beauty plants can easily be cultivated in home gardens, tolerating partial shade particularly well. Here's another uh, wild edible that's very easy to identify. Uh, it's another invasive one too. It's uh, garlic mustard. It's a little bitter. And believe it or not, it has a uh, garlicky, mustardy taste. Who would have thought? Garlic mustard, Aliaria petiolata. A member of the Brassicaceae family, garlic mustard is native to Europe and parts of Asia. It is another highly invasive plant in North America. Garlic mustard has allelopathic properties, meaning it produces chemicals which can inhibit the growth of other nearby plants. This effect contributes to its ability to dominate forest understories and disrupt native plant communities. It's a great time to harvest these guys right here. They're ramps. Uh, in my winter video, I showed you uh, digging up one of the bulbs. This is the, the leaf portion of them. They uh, sprout about this time of year. But if you're gonna harvest them, make sure you do it sustainably. Really, you only wanna take one leaf per plant. That way it can continue to grow. But they're delicious. Uh, it's kind of a mix between lettuce and onion. Some people like to saute them, but uh, I actually like them raw. I think they're better raw. But again, make sure you're only taking one leaf per plant. Great wild edible. Ramp, Allium trichocum. Ramps are a springtime delicacy, typically appearing in forests and wooded areas from late March into early June. However, due to their popularity, overharvesting can threaten wild ramp populations. Responsible foraging practices are encouraged to ensure sustainability. Ramps belong to the Allium genus, which includes other members such as onions, garlic, and chives. They reproduce both by seed and by spreading rhizomes, allowing them to slowly colonize large areas over time. However, this process is slow, contributing to their vulnerability to over-harvesting. If you are going to harvest them, please do so sustainably.